What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Western Carolina AD Dynasty here on NCAA Basketball 10. I am your host, John J. Gaming, and today we have ourselves a little doubleheader special as it is Rivalry Week here in, you know, in the later portions of this season, taking on Appalachian State two times in a row. So first, we'll go on the road to play these guys, and then on Saturday, just five days later, or four to five days later, they'll be coming to our turf. I'm trying to go 2-0 and in this episode, and if you're excited as well, make sure you smash that like button as well as subscribe if you have to be new for more Franchise Guru's content. Let's go ahead and get these games in versus App State, shall we? All right, man, with all that being said, time to officially get this game underway. Going to definitely be a really interesting one considering we have two completely different styles of play. Appalachian State likes to practically take a nap, try to lull us to sleep, as that's how they get their first bucket. You know, just being really patient, you know, not really rushing everything. Where we like to go guns up blazing as they nearly get that bucket to go, but it is missed. You can see that style of play being a lot different as Coco Bomaye drives into the lane and gives us our first bucket of this ball game. Got it all tied up at two for now. As this App State player nearly gets that jumper to fall, trying to hit that Kobe F Bryant fadeaway, but that doesn't work out for him. But what does work is the Tony Glenn lay-in with a 4-2 lead. As we try to steal the ball here, it does not work at all. We pay for it on this other end, opening up our defense. Game is all tied up at 4. A much more low scoring game than what it usually is, but that might change here as Coco Bomaye going down the sideline and getting that bucket for us. Coming with that 6 to 4 lead, very back in fourth affair. So I'm surprised we didn't get that steal though, as our power forward is going to get into the lane, get the bucket to go. Also, we'll get the and one. And as of right now, early on, Appalachian State does have the advantage. You know, just really throwing off Western Carolina as there's another bucket that they go via the alley oop. Not the previous alley oop, but still works out for them. So we're still down by two, though. They go inside again. This time their point guard able to get that one to go. But, you know, just as they were starting to pull away, they have the bright idea of letting their center take the ball up court. You know how that works out for them. That's not the move, Chief. As Henderson... Hits a little fadeaway. Thought he was just going to drive in the hoop. That's what I was trying to do. And, uh, you know, still works out for us. We got the bucket. As now, App State looking for their first bucket in a couple of minutes. They get it again. Playing really well on their home floor, actually. W with a nice, decent lead. But we're going to change that right away as Bomaye trying to drive down court. Doesn't work. Going to pass it out. Get it to Tony Glenn. Who gets that one to fall? And your Catamounts. Briefly had the lead before gi giving it away on a later possession. And we're about to, and you know, right off the bat, man, just turn the ball over once again. Going coast to coast, actually. I guess I see why that center takes it up court himself sometimes. As we draw a foul on us on our backup center, Corlone Teeters. So now, Amp State, two point lead, trying to get the steal. And we do. Clinton down the sideline, packing it to, to Axel Mackey. He ties his ball game up at a crisp 25. You can see why App State is still in this ball game despite playing so slow. They're shooting 60% from the field, but these turnovers might change the course of his game though. As we force a turnover on the Mountaineers, going to go to O'Neal who misses, but Clinton does get the putback, a backup shooting guard on this squad. And now, up by 1, 27 to 26. They get it to their point guard once again. He hits the fadeaway jumper. Fine to keep this lead, or at least get a lead in the going into the halftime. Just going back and forth with the Catamounts, who are the best team in the entire conference. And now, 32 to 30. We got the ball back. It's stolen. Going up court, and it's Marcus O'Neal who lays it in. As we're trying to take the lead right back from these guys. Really being stubborn and not giving up. As we turn the ball once again. Just an abnormally sloppy performance for us so far today. 
is a big reason why App State is still in this game as we give up a oh I thought it was a three but we do go into the locker room down by three points at halftime Appalachian State playing right how they play you can see a disparity 65 percent from the field and that's without even making a single free as well. Absolutely insane. As we you know, just got to keep, you know, doing what we do. Play Western Carolina basketball as we go into the locker room. Actually, out of the locker room. First possession. Get a turnover. Get it to Tony Glenn. Get the easy lay in. Try to force these guys to play a lot less comfortably. As you know, we let them get settled in their own rhythm. Whenever they miss like they do. Yeah, we gotta push it right away as Coco Bomaye takes it to the hoop. He misses the first one, but does get his own rebound and get the putback. You know, it just really barrels down to getting stops. That's why our system works so well, because we move immediately after every defensive stop. As there's Samuel pulling up from deep, hitting a deep three-pointer. Very, very deep. That's probably where some SoCon logos are. As there's Samuel nearly making another one. Couldn't quite get that one to go, but Henderson does pick up the offensive board. And the Catamounts now have a four-point lead. Their point guard driving in. Gonna miss it. You already know what's about to happen. We're gonna push this thing up court. Gonna pass it out to Perkins, who has some space. But was on the line, but still a nice shot for the point guard. The senior point guard in Sam Perkins. As we still have only a four-point lead, though. Let's see if we can open things up, though. Tony Glenn's going to hit a nice mid-range jumper. Those elbow shots could be a little, you know, iffy at times. But, you know, able to make it work that time around. And still, only a five-point lead, though. These guys just don't give up. As we're swinging around, trying to see if we can get somebody open here. We do, and Sam Perkins, who gets the jumper to go. Again, his foot was on the line. Still counts as two points, though. As we now have a seven-point lead that the Mountaineers are refusing to give up on, but they can't get the putback to go. Bamaye driving down court, leaving a wide-open Sam Perkins. He hits it from deep. Honestly, a great value brand, Stephen Curry in the NBA. And now it's a 10-point ball game. The game is slipping away from the Mountain Years in the first part of this doubleheader. As now we're going back up court. Glenn going to try to push his way through. Nearly gets the end one to fall. Michael Hollins of App State does get called for the foul. Able to make one of his free throws. As we'll cut back to a little later. Teeters on the line. Misses both free throws. Sends a dart across court and still gets that one to fall. So just pulling out all the tricks in this rivalry week. You know, a very, you know, underdog kind of team that we're looking at in front of us. And you can see it right here, man. These guys refuse to give up. Even on their home court in this rivalry week. It is back down to a six-point ball game. Is now they're gonna try to drive in. We miss again. It is now a four-point game. A really tight one here in Appalachian State in the middle of Boone, North Carolina. So now Bumaye gonna pull up from the elbow. It's good. Gonna start taking control of this game once again as it's only an eight-point ball game. Glenn's gonna pull up. No, he's gonna pass it around. Teeter's gonna get it to Sam Perkins, who passes it. All the way over to Marcus O'Neal, not a shooter, but is able to make that three-pointer fall. And just like that, 11-point ball game. How's the Mountaineers going to respond? They try to get the floater, but that's no good. Axel Mackey going to pull up from deep. That might be the dagger right there. And it sure was as we are going to leave. Game one of this doubleheader against Appalachian State, winning by a final score of 82-64. to a nice performance, nice way to deal with adversity as well. So looking at the stats for today's game, and you know, it was actually a pretty even attack that the Catamounts came out with today. No one really tore the world apart for say, Glenn and Bomaye each had 14 points apiece with Tyson Glenn getting player to game, 8 rebounds on top of 2 assists, a block, and a steal. You love to see it. Devin Samuel and Sam Perkins also got to double digits with 11 points. Henderson had 8. 
And then off the bench, you know, our leading bench scorer was Marcus O'Neal with 8-1-1. One, one. Mackey even had 7 points. Clinton had 5. Jason Woodson had a couple of points as well. You know, almost everybody that got into the game today actually did score. The only exception was Grant Vasher and Curlone Teeters. But, you know, we're able to get this first win of this doubleheader against Appalachian State. Only thing left to do now is to go to number 2 of this double header and once again if you do enjoy the content here on the franchise gurus channel make sure you smash that like button as well as subscribe if you have to be brand new with all that being said though let's go ahead and go to game number two all right man so here we are for game two of this double header if we're able to drop these guys off by 18 points in the home opener then you know i can only imagine what we're going to be able to do here at our home as Coco Bomaye pulls up, misses, but Henderson is there to pick up the board and get the put back as early on. It's all Western Carolina. Henderson driving in again with some authority, drawing the foul on Sean Monroe, making both free throws, by the way. But here comes the Mountaineers going into the paint and forcing a foul on Tyson Glenn. Only makes one free throw, though, so it's still a tied ball game. Yo, still a very tightly contested ball game as there is a emphatic jam. As now, App State, two-point lead, but you left Sam Perkins open, and that is a big mistake. He's able to drill that free. Just absolutely great range. Love playing with this player as well as the rest of his Catamounts team as there's another bucket for the power forward. So with, still with a one-point lead. These guys are definitely playing with a lot of heart. Not the best team on the face of the earth by the record. But we're still pointing out work though as Bomaye makes a great cut to the hoop. And now, 22-21. Gonna miss this shot here and here comes the Catamounts. Mackey going up the four and he's gonna get that one to go. Going practically coast to coast. Great speed all around. That's why this system works so well. Just athleticism all over this court. And the Mountaineers, they're not ready for it. And they're not ready for Teeters either. Another emphatic jam. As the Catamounts now hold a six-point lead. But that might not hold long. As the Mountaineers, first time in this doubleheader, push it down court and get another foul on Tyson Glenn. So we'll be seeing more Teeters for the rest of his you know, first half as we throw a turnover off the inbounds play. Mountaineers calling back, but we're going to try to prevent that. Henderson's in the post, going to get to O'Neal. It's another turnover. And now, here comes the Mountaineers again. Going to try to drive it in. They are successful. Only a three-point lead. Going to try to get the turnaround, though. That's blocked. Here comes Devin Samuel running across. He's able to get that one to go. Still a three-point lead, though. But here comes the Mountaineers trying to see if they can tie this thing up. They choose not to as they try to go for the two-pointer. Not going to work whatsoever as Coco Bomaye goes the other way and gets that basket. As we go into halftime once again in a very tight battle with our rivals not too far from us. Doing a lot better job on defense. Only They're only shooting 52% from the field. You know, we just got to do a better job of running and just not turning the ball over more often. That would be very good to see. As we'll cut things back into the second half of his second game of the doubleheader. Here comes Devin Samuel throwing another jam to start this second half. What a way to set a tone. And now it's a three-point ball game. Mountaineers swinging the ball around. See if they can get something to shake. They're going to get it to their big man who's going to try to hop step. And it's a nice move. To get a good shot off and it works out for them. Later on, 43 to 40. Here comes our point guard slicing and Dyson. Able to get that one to go as well. As both teams playing really hard. But here comes the Catamounts with another lay-in with Tyson Glenn. Despite being considered a big man, he definitely has some skill to him. Doesn't refer to just dunks. As there's a turnover forced by the Catamount. It's going to pass it up for. Speaking of which, there's an and one for Tywin Grin. Able to make the free throw as well. 
trying to pull away from these guys. It hasn't exactly materialized yet. But here comes Tyson Glenn off another steal. There's a dunk, though. He may be a skilled big man, but that doesn't mean he can't throw it down, too. But despite all of this, it's still only a five-point game. These guys don't quit. But near do our catamounts as Coco Bomaye going cross court, able to lay it in there himself, using that athleticism to get to the hoop and get him get a bucket. As now they're just starting to miss shots left and right. It's time for us to take advantage as we try to go up with Cologne Teeters. Makes both free throws surprisingly. He had a more difficult time in the previous game, but we'll definitely take the points regardless. As now. Catamount 62-57. Gonna pass it to the corner to Axel Mackey, who makes that one go. As we pull away here, an eight-point ball game. Marcus O'Neill now has the rock. Gonna pull up from deep. He misses, but Henderson picks up the garbage. Able to get that one to fall. Catamount starting to pull away here and really take control here in the second half as there's another emphatic jam. For Tyson Glenn as the Catamounts are sitting on an 11 to 2 run you would get the steal there too I'm surprised it didn't work out for us let's see what they do here I actually get that one to go that's actually a really nice post move as we still hold a 13 point lead we try to press them see if we can get a double team maybe a steal and uh, they drive right through us and nearly get the end one in the process Coco Bomaye will be drawn for the foul as uh, it's only a 13 point game not as much of a blowout as it is with some of our other games this series but you know able to beat the full court press and take care of business once again in this doubleheader Western Carolina will go 2-0 against Appalachian State a final score being 86 to 67 you love to see it so checking out the stats to the second part of this doubleheader and there's one person I want to point out right for the jump Anthony Henderson not known for a scoring, only coming in with 5 points per game. Went off today. 17 points, 12 rebounds. He's the player of the game in my book. We also had contributions from guys like Sam Perkins, Coco Bomaye, Tyson Glenn, all scoring in double figures. Axel Mackey, you know, really coming into his own as well. Coming off the bench, he had 9 points a board and an assist as well. Definitely showed out today. The rest of the team, you know, did what it had to do in order to help us become 2-0 in this doubleheader, man. So with those two wins against Appalachian State, we improve to 22-1 on the season of phenomenal year for the Catamounts. As we go into the last month of conference play before we go into our tournament, we only have six more games left, so probably a couple more episodes top before we go into the conference tournament. I think next time out, going to use this opportunity to play against Wofford on the road. I think they're the only team in conference play right now that are legitimately kind of close to us. Um, and then, you know, you know, we'll play Wofford. And then the episode after that, probably we'll play Charleston. They get to his conference tournament, man. It's going to be really exciting. So if you enjoy the content here on the Franchise Gurus channel, make sure you smash that like button. As well as subscribe if you have to be new. This is, uh, this is John J. Gaming as your host. Hope you all have a good one. Take care, everybody.